I figured I can't wait for the earthquakes to be blamed on global warming and climate change. Deep sea plate tectonics are now going to be blamed on global warming and climate change. So I looked around on Twitter and of course it already happened. People were saying, oh my gosh, th does this not, is this not a better indicator that global warming is really taking place? And we're to blame for it. Yes, some people actually said that the earthquake in Japan is or could be linked to global warming. Which is obviously incorrect if you've been following the scientific literature. But Lee did stumble on a grain of truth in these statements. And I don't want to hear any Rube Goldberg talking points on, oh, you see, we give off carbon and then it melts the, the uh, big ice sheets up on the North Pole and those w the weights are, are, are pushing down on the plates and therefore the release of the of the weights then lead to earthquakes. I'm sorry folks, that's not how earthquakes take place. That's not how plate tectonics take place. I don't want to hear any nonsense. Now this wasn't one of the most clear explanations, but what you can understand from this is that Lee holds the opinion that the earthquake has nothing to do with global warming and cannot be linked to any melting ice sheets and subsequent sea level rise. And he's correct with that. Although there is published research available that melting ice sheets can cause earthquakes, what happens is that the weight of an ice sheet actually presses the crust down, and when its pressure is released when the ice melts, the crust rebounds, in a process that's called isostatic rebound. This can cause massive earthquakes, and we've seen this at the end of ice ages. There are even quakes happening now due to the melting of some glaciers and ice sheets. Now to the reference of sea level rise you gave, this is probably not possible that it could trigger earthquakes, as I've consulted with Angry Womble and she's not aware of any links between a significant sea level rise and earthquakes, especially not as current sea level rise is just a couple of centimeters and is predominantly caused by thermal expansion of the oceans, which means that there is barely any noticeable pressure difference at the ocean floor. So these scenarios cannot explain the quake in Japan as it was clearly triggered by plate tectonics. But as the isostatic rebound papers got some attention in the media, this very well could have planted the seed for these tweets. But then Lee makes the following jump with his argumentation. It just demonstrates that there is no falsifiability when it comes to the global warming or climate change. It is nothing, this is not a statement on whether or not it's actually taking place. This is just a statement on the scientific arguments of it. He's now actually attacking the science behind anthropogenic global warming based on several tweets. Now if you take a look at these tweets and the accounts where these originated, you will notice one thing. The people who made these tweets aren't scientists. They were made by ordinary people who had an opinion. And afterwards they either removed them or tweeted corrections or clarifications. But they did get a lot of hate from people after you paraded these tweets around to make your case. Some actually receiving threats because of this. But this isn't even the worst part. One of the tweets you use as an example was from a 17 year old girl from Germany. Someone who doesn't have a mastery of the English language and because of it didn't format her tweet correctly. She already tweeted about what she actually meant, but she gave a very good clarification to me when I followed up with her on this. The words chosen from my tweet, I must admit, were confusing. Because I don't know if the earthquake happened due to global warming, and I don't want to claim it either. But it is possible that there will be more of catastrophes that really happened because of global warming, because of our actions. Also, while we talked about global warming, we didn't know about the earthquake in Japan, so these things are not really related to each other. In other words, she didn't mean it the way you interpreted it. She definitely didn't deserve the hateful comments she received, or any of the other people involved in this. Yes, they were wrong, but they have been correcting and clarifying themselves. And as they aren't scientists, this can't be used to criticize the science beyond the theory. So when you said the following... What indicators or scientific data would take place to let us know if it has stopped for one reason or if it's reversed its course? We need some scientific falsifiable uh, data to demonstrate that, but now everything is caused by this. Everything is caused by man-made climate change. This isn't exactly a valid argument in my opinion. For one, you said from the onset that this couldn't be true, and even gave some reasoning for it. And with the information I added about what's published in the scientific literature, I've shown this is indeed the case, which means the statements they made were falsifiable. However, most importantly, some tweets on the internet have no bearing whatsoever on the science involved, and so you can't use these as an example that the theory has reached a point that is no longer falsifiable. What matters is what's in the literature and can be verified. 
entire theory rests on evidence and facts that either validate or disprove parts of it. And this is constantly tested against new evidence and scrutinized by scientists on validity. It's a continuing process where bad research gets weeded out and scientific knowledge and understanding gets corrected and amended. Don't start parading tweets around to make your case. If you want to criticize a theory, do it on the science, as using tweets from some random people on the internet is not a valid way to do this. And if this is the only way you can criticize a scientific theory, you need to think long and hard to see if you actually have a point.